we have a very special surprise guest for you tonight. We don't even know how we managed to get him here. And frankly, he probably doesn't know how he got here either. But he's here. So would you please give a big welcome to President Joe Biden. Is my mask on? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. You chumps out there. My name is, um, is, uh, <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden. I'm the big guy. Joe Biden. What the heck is this? Classified document. <laughs> I wonder where it came from. There's tire marks on here. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are worried about my health. They're worried about my health. Well, don't be worried about my health. I'm in perfect health. I'm in perfect health. If you don't believe me, ask my doctor, Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> I want you to know that President Harris and myself are doing an outstanding, <laughs> an outstanding job as President and First Lady. <laughs> now, don't laugh. We're doing the work right now, the work right now of three people, Larry, Curly, and Moe. <laughs> Before going, I'd like to read you a list of my accomplishments as president. <laughs> I, kept, uh, I kept my son out of prison. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, America. Happy Easter. Please give a warm welcome to the master of celebrity impressions, Rich Little. Thank you. Thank you. The last time, Rich, you were here, we had a snowstorm and we That's couldn't right. get an audience in here. That's right. And you were still gracious enough to perform without an audience. It's got to be a little more fun with people reacting to what you're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was tough. But, uh, uh, you know, the band loved it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they had to come. We didn't give them the night off. True. Despite true, the snow. True, yeah. You know, you've been our guest more than any guest we've had on the Huckabee Show, and there's a reason for it, and that's because we love having you oh, well, and our right. audience, both right. at home and uh, here in the theater, yeah, yeah. love having you. Well, I love doing the show, and you know, and you're such a popular person. I mean, everybody <laughs> loves you, really. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> you know, I'm having a little trouble, though, sleeping lately. Do you, have you got uh, <laughs> anything you could recommend me for sleeping? Yeah, I'll talk to you after the show. I'll give you some great okay, yeah. hits yes. on this. Up you know? until now, I've been listening to Joe Biden's speeches. You know? <laughs> That but may that, be as effective as relaxing. Well, that's I gotta turned tell into you, a nightmare. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How many impressions do you even do? Do you have any idea? If I was put to the test, probably about 50 or 60. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Well, I think my favorite is Ronald Reagan. Hmm. And um, now, 
I, I just loved the man. He, he was a wonderful guy with a great sense of humor. Yeah. He loved humor. And every time I saw him, I had to tell him a joke, you know? And he'd write it down, too. And one time he did impressions for me. Did he do an impression Reagan of Reagan did an impression of um, Truman Capote. <laughs> Ronald Reagan Ronald did an impression. Ronald Reagan did an impression of Truman Capote. And um, he turned to me and he said, Rich, I like to do Truman Capote, but I, unfortunately, I, I don't have any lines to say. <laughs> I, I don't know, have any jokes. <laughs> and so I gave him one. I said, I've got one you can use in my act. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I said, no, please. So he got a Secret Service man over, <laughs> and he got a pen, and he wrote the, this joke down on the back of the Secret Service man. <laughs> and, and here's what it was. My name is Truman Capote. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think that I wrote in cold blood, but that's not true. Actually, I wrote in ink. <laughs> That and Reagan wrote that down. He like, loved that. That sounded exactly like Truman Capote. Yeah, well, you... Now, if, if I were interviewing Ronald Reagan, yeah. and I asked this question, when do you believe that a person should be legally proclaimed deceased? When the brain stops functioning or when the heart stops beating? Oh, I would have to say when the heart stops beating. Good Lord... If we determine that by the brain stops functioning, we would wipe out half the Democratic Party. <laughs> Some of the great actors of Hollywood, they had such distinctive voices. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking today, I don't necessarily know that many younger up and coming actors that are as distinct a voice as, let's say, Jimmy Stewart or yeah, James that, Cagney. That, that's very true, Governor. Uh, you, you have to pick somebody that has just something different in their voice, you know. A lot of people sound the same. So, like uh, Dr. Phil, as an example, <laughs> who is easy to do because he's so larger than life. I know, I know that the, you know that I know. <laughs> and if you knew that, then we both would know if we knew it all, when we knew it, if we knew it at all. <laughs> that is dead on perfect. What about Jimmy Stewart? Well, uh, Jim, 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 um, uh, he, Jim one time said to me, Richard, you do me so good that I, you're better doing me than I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a matter of fact, Richard, you, you do me so good that I, I, I was hoping when I passed away, they should have buried you. <laughs> wow. You know, one of the things I remember you telling me that there were times when actors could no longer maybe read their lines and they actually ask you to dub lines in a movie right? because you were able to carry out the voice and nobody ever knew the difference. Yes, if somebody passed away or they had laryngitis, yeah. they would call on me. And I've done it for a number of people. I, I did a Christmas special one time as Gene Kelly. <laughs> and I did the whole Christmas uh, special with that little voice of his, you know, that high voice that Gene Kelly had. And uh, nobody knew the difference. But you didn't have to dance. Didn't have to dance. Yeah, just talk. But, uh, and I, I saw it and nobody knew it was me doing that. Really? So and it was an uncredited movie yep. role, I guess. I did, uh, uh, I did Tony Curtis for a movie once too. Let's hear He that. did a, a, a movie in Europe and they didn't pay him. <laughs> and um, he got so fed up, he said, I'm just gonna walk off the picture. And they said, oh no, the money's coming. You know, same old story, but it never came. And so he left. And uh, they didn't have a finish to the movie, and they needed his voice. And uh, so they came to me to do it. <laughs> and I did it. I, d I did my, my Tony Curtis for, for these people, this, this movie. And I talk, <laughs> I talk like this. Yonder lies the castle of me father. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did Tony Curtis. And I phoned up Tony and I said, Tony, I just dubbed you for a film. <laughs> you didn't do that, did you? And I said, yeah, they didn't pay me. 
Did you get your money up front? I said, yeah, I got money before I did it. Good. You owe me half of it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love some of the voices of, of these great actors from the past. Did you ever do Humphrey Bogart? I know you had to. Uh, Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Sam Spade. I, I was working a murder case out in Brentwood. A woman had been found dead in a bathtub full of cornflakes and milk. Well, it was rather unusual, but I, I went over all the clues and I looked at all the evidence and I came to the conclusion that it must be a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I was so wondering where that was going. Oh, Rich, I, I, I like I like a joke where you don't know where it's going. Well, I didn't know you? where that one yeah, was going. Yeah. Sometimes I, I don't either, but uh. <laughs> you've been with us, and I hope that you will continue to keep the record anytime as our want, most invited any, guest. Anytime you want me to come back, I'm I'm available. If next week you're available, next I'm week back. I'm available. Okay, there you go. Hey, if you want to keep Good up with Rich is, Little, right. And if you want to get his autobiography, as well, getting tickets to see him at the Tropicana in Vegas, simply head to Huckabee.tv. We will hook you up how to get tickets to his show the next time you go to Vegas or make a special trip just to see Rich Little. It would be worth it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.